dollar J. I don't know what to do with it. No idea. Going to my channel. Hello and good morning and happy lab Labor Day. And I go lives. Uh, bam, bam, bam. This says it's live. Am I live? I am from. The oh gosh, I am live. Good morning, everyone. Uh, whoever's watching, I guess we just start the new event and here we are again. So I was going to play a real quick song for you and see who shows up for uh, Labor Day. We had a, a weird deal, you know, over the weekend. It's been Labor Day. Some people leave, they go other places. People love each other and stuff and hang out with their family and such. And, uh, we'll see if anybody finds this live feed. Or should I try and like broadcast it? At least one person's watching, I see. Good morning, whoever you are. You're welcome to give me questions. I have nothing pre-planned. I will warn you that my pad did not charge like I planned to, so this may be a shorter session. But it's Labor Day. This is a song I wrote with my uh, sister and uh, some friends back in the day. It's called Free Your Mind. So I thought I'd open up things with that while you guys are saying, hey, lying on my bed, hearing what you said, running through my head, naturally it's overdone and overplayed these words get in your mind and in your face is it love or some book you read be conscious curious infectious contagious and mean what you say free your mind Uh, this is the live feed from uh, Muslim Music Live because the link still didn't pick it up. I guess my iPad has a problem. I charged up my iPad and all night, all day, and now I'm over here. I'm, I've got the thing going on, and the next thing I know, like, it's like, because uh, I was trying to set up everything beforehand because I'm kind of, like, at that age where, like, I try and plan for stuff. But uh, anyway, so the iPad only has so much charging, so this may be a shorter session, but I do appreciate everybody who's here. And happy Labor Day. Um, I didn't have any necessarily like pre-planned stuff. Did want to say a real quick, uh, wow, rest in peace to Jimmy Buffett. Uh, I just uploaded a songbook to actually both channels because I thought that was cool. Been doing a lot of the songbooks lately. If you kind of catch the hymn playlist or the Taylor Swift or the Ed Sheeran or the Fleetwood Mac, like trying to take all the the cover lessons for a certain band or a certain genre, a certain decade, I'm throwing those together so you can find them easier with the time code so you can go, oh, you know, and, and I feel like that, that especially the, you know, the Jimmy Buffett, man, I grew up with that album on replay in my mom's car. Like my mom only had like three albums in her car when I was growing up and she'd always sing harmonies to Jimmy Buffett, James Taylor and Carol King. Like my whole childhood, I don't know where I would be musically if it hadn't been for my mom singing bang you know harmonies to jimmy buffett for years upon years upon years um but man let's let's see what everybody's saying if you guys got a question jump in go hey da -da -da, want a question if you have a, a comment about stuff I, I see jack you're there man good morning how's it going jack 
Uh, keep up the great work. I sure am trying, sir. Um, this is a really weird, strange gig. I've never done a gig quite like this before until now. Um, but I've been doing it for a while. But um, Man, I sure am trying to keep up the great work. I do feel like YouTube kind of hides some of my stuff lately. And so, like, we had this problem the last Q&A. It was like, oh, yeah, let me send you a link for this video. It would be really, really helpful. And I'm looking for something I created with a title that I know what it is and I know where it is and I've got to go to content manager to find it I guess because I've reached the quota for the day or something so YouTube is a fickle beast and I don't know what to do with it but uh, anyway I feel like the, the songbooks have been a lot of fun to put together so I hope you guys are enjoying those um, come tree crew oh gosh I don't know I don't try crew man that is beautiful man I'm doing great oh man it's great to see you I'm, I'm kind of riding down the thing I hope everybody's having a great uh Labor Day and I'm sure I'm going to mispronounce your names just as bad as artists in my old how to play tutorials uh Renee I love you hey little Walter uh, randomly my uncle Walter was my first guitar instructor and this somebody was commenting on the nylon string this is my uncle's guitar that he gifted me right before he passed away actually and so this is Uncle Walter's guitar. And growing up, I was not uh, Munson. I was Little Walter until at some point when I was in high school. I was like, you know what? It'd be cool to go by my middle name and be Munson. And that's when Munson became Munson. Uh, or I became Munson or something became Munson. Anyway, good morning. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, no, it's, it's awesome. It's good to see you, Renee. I'd written you a question a couple of weeks ago, but now I don't remember. You don't remember what the question was or whether you were sending it to me. Oh, gosh. I don't remember. I think you were asking me about something about guitar strings, and actually, I guess that kind of plays into. Oh man, I'm so glad that you were digging on the original tune too. And I, I'm I'm down for like playing some background music too. I guess I don't normally do that. I'm like, hey, you know, it's serenade you guys while I'm sitting here reading your comments, trying to answer your question. So if you have a, a, a question about something, that's cool. If you want to even take this live feed and, and spread it around, that's cool too. Because I always set up the link like a month in advance, and I always feel like it gets to be the appointed time and nothing happens, and then I've got to like just start it live again. So uh, I have a nylon string, a regular steel string, acoustic guitar. Oh man, I, I, I love nylon strings. They feel better um, in a lot of ways, right? Sounds different on a classical and a regular guitar. Indeed. Cool. And this song is, uh, oh gosh, a, um, I, actually something I wrote with, with my sister with a band years ago with our friends Jay Spell and, uh, and Kevin Flowers. Um, anyway, call Free Your Mind. Um, there may be like a, a recording up somewhere. I feel like I need to re-record a lot of this stuff. Um, do have some original stuff up on uh, the channels and on Spotify and there might be other stuff somewhere. I don't know. There was like this album compilation thing called Fountain. If you went and looked for like months in Fountain, you might find something with some funky cool awesome art that my, my daughter and I did, I think. Uh, um, is that Michelle says, uh, oh gosh, you're talking to me and, and that is that German? You might be a friend of Renee's. Um, what is that? I, I don't need, oh gosh, wow. My great, 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 great grandfather might be able to read that. Hello from Germany, man. Greetings from Germany. Thank you for coming, dude. This is great. Uh, hello from Germany. Uh, YouTube isn't giving me notifications on comments on my channel. Uh, that ain't cool. Yes, it was about strings, drop D tuning. Ah, oh, and, and the other thing is Dutch. Renee knows because she's, she is, Renee is definitely more worldly than me. Um, so thanks for watching, Renee. Um, so drop D tuning. All right, that's a good question. What do you do with drop D tuning? Um, and I, I see this on the YouTube tutorial sometimes. I'll get a question like, you know, that going to California song by Led Zeppelin, that's in drop D tuning. And. It doesn't mean that you can't play all the same chords without doing that tuning. It just means if you do do that tuning, then you would get like a low, super awesome D note randomly. And we've talked in these particular Q and A's. I know, and I forget. Oh gosh, exactly who all, we all, I always feel like we end up on on cool D shapes, like you know D major, little box shape, five seven seven, like from the high E. Another D major, uh, oh gosh, uh, 10, 10, 11 is another D major. Then you got, you know, your D of, there's little triad things, like other places you can play the same notes. I guess I could even give you guys a, a diagram, like what the heck is he talking about? So when you play a D chord, for instance, since you're asking about drop D tuning, you're playing Ds and F sharps and As, all right? I'm just kind of gravitating to the D. Um, but what's cool is like on the guitar or any instrument, actually, um, as long as you're playing the same notes, 
in a different place, it's still that chord. So you don't actually have to play a chord in one position necessarily, which is always cool to know. Um, this is second and that's third. This is like a D over here and an F sharp over here. I'm drawing a picture. Um, me, draw a picture. You understand. Let's see, a D goes this way. A is there. F sharp's there. Bam! All right, cool. This is like five and that's seven. This is like 10. This is 11. All right, cool. And if I was going to tab this D major thing, so for instance, you're playing a song. You're like, ooh, this song is cool. I'm going to play it a lot of D chords. Like, for instance, there's a song by Blake Shelton called Neon Light. If you guys are, are country fans, there's a neon light at the end of the tunnel. Ain't all that bright, even though it's... And it's all D chord, the whole song. It's freaking D. It's over and over and over and over. So anyway, this is my beautiful picture. I can't see quite as well. I've dimmed my brightness on my screen to try and make the iPad a little bit last a little bit longer because like I said I charged it all day I prepared I had this thing on for like an hour beforehand and now it's like at 12 percent or something something awful like it was just I don't know I don't know I don't know how iPads work no idea how any of this technology works but this is D chord diagrams oh I forgot to circle this one sorry I'm OCD um so <laughs> So anyway, these are all different places you could play a D chord. It's like second and third fret. Uh, you could play it up here on five and seven. You could play it up here on 10, 11. So it can be cool with a drop D thing. And I was trying to give you some tab there too. So you can take the low E string and like loosen it up to be a low D. And now I've got like some low support for my D chord. It sounds thicker. Right, and there's my D up here on five and seven. I'm gravitating this 16th feel. I have no idea, man. Down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, down. That's about as crazy as strumming gets. Should I draw that down? I do things, and I'm like, what am I doing? And I'm like, I should write that down for people. Uh, up, up, down, up, down, up. All right, cool. This is actually like the strumming pattern on on the one tune, the first by Taylor Swift. Also, like if you're interested in some weird, strange, awesome, Latin, cool strumming, it's kind of like a three plus three plus fourth. Wait. Yeah, three plus three plus three plus three plus two. All right, cool. It's kind of a down, up, up. It's kind of three. Down, up, up is a three. Down, up, down, up is kind of a two thing. Anyway, uh, there's this cool pattern that you could kind of use if you like that strum pattern. But that low D. Oh, yeah, drop D would definitely work on the 12 string, Renee. Yeah, cool. I'm going to try and kind of keep up with, like, you know, as people are jumping in. How many languages can I speak? Man, dude, that's a great question. I can kind of speak almost English because I'm American. <laughs> like, <laughs> is that the right answer? Like, I really wish I, I, I try and fake Spanish. Like, and I say that I can speak enough Spanish to teach a guitar lesson in Spanish. You know, uh, abajo arriba. Like, I can, I can do that, you know, and then uh, D is not D in Spanish, it's re mejor. So, I can, I can do some Spanish, you know, and I took French in high school, but I don't remember much about it. Yeah, I think with the language, and I say that, I would include music. If somebody said, how many languages do you speak? I would say at least two. There's like Americanese, <laughs> and then music, <laughs> and then like a little bit of Spanish. Yeah, that, that, that's my poco. I wish I could speak more, because then I could do more covers, right? I mean, I'm going to eventually do La Bamba. I know, because I've had it as a request, and I've got it as a how to play, and I love that song, but I'm, I'm really going to have to do it. I'm really going to have to practice for that. Like, I have Despacito up, if you've seen that cover, and I've had people who are like, you're not pronouncing this right. And then I have other people who's like, oh, that's exactly dialectically how we pronounce all those words, too. I don't know what to do with all that. Um, trying to just kind of, like, copy the Puerto Rican, you know what I'm saying? Like, Puerto Rican Spanish is probably not, like, Castilian Spanish, and that's definitely not mexican -y, you know, Mexican Spanish. You, you know what I'm saying? There's this thing, like, like Americanese is, like, you know, you got South Americanese, and then you got North, you got Southern, you got Western, you got Minnesotan, you know. Mark, I hope you're out there, <laughs> like, listening to my Minnesota accent. But anyway, so you got Drop D going on. You got this low D thing. The, the weird thing with the tuning there is when you go drop D, all of a sudden you've loosened up the E string. So all your chord shapes are messed up now for anything other than D. So your G chord used to be this, guitar players. But now this low E string on the third fret is an F note. It's not a G anymore. So it's cool to like, I want to play that song with a drop D tuning, but the weird thing is all of a sudden all your shapes get shifted over. So whatever you're playing on the low E string, you have to add two frets. 
I know that's weird. So like, if you're playing a, a D, you're cool. You could play the low E. You get a really cool sound. If you're on the G chord, what I normally do is I'll play the high E third fret, fifth fret on the low E, and just kind of mute out the A string so it doesn't sound. This is like me taking this shape on the guitar and adding two frets to the thick E, if that makes any sense at all. So E minor, for instance, would normally be this guy, or E major even, right? But now you got a low D, so you got to add two frets and put the second fret down. So now your E minor looks like an A shape to cover the same notes, if that makes any sense at all. It's kind of weird, but maybe that gives you kind of a sense of like, what does drop D do? It messes up your freaking guitar, is <laughs> what it does, and then all of a sudden you've got to add, you know, two frets to all the chord shapes that you used to know, which is why on my channels, I don't normally do drop D as a thing, like, an, and then normally you don't have to do drop D as a thing if it, you know, if you're playing a song and it says drop D and it says a D chord, a D chord's still a D chord no matter what, no matter what instrument either. It could be guitar, ukulele, banjo, da da da. If you know what that chord is, you just know what that chord is. And it's just a collection of notes. So you can really do it in lots of places too. That's sort of my point with the D major. Anyway, so E minor and drop D, boop, 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 you know, becomes something really weird, right? Because now we're talking about drop D. Right, so drop D. So yeah, just so you can kind of get a sense of like what we would do. You, you take your regular G shape, right? And now you got to like add two frets, you know? You got your G and it's like, oh, I got to take that thick E and then add two. So now he's like fifth fret instead of third fret. And I've just got this X over here to like be like mute that string. A chord, C chord, unaffected, right? Because you've got like no low E. You're just trying to, you're trying to aim from the A string to the high E anyway. You know, if you want a really clear sound from it. Uh, F major 7, not affected. You know, uh, bars would be really weird, right? Because, like, this would be your, your bar F shape. But now you got to add two frets to the low E. So what are you going to do? Like this? Like 3, 3, 3, 2. Maybe I'll bar these two or something. So that's my F chord shape now. My G bar shape. You know, it gets, it gets kind of weird. But from a songwriting point of view, I really like Drop D. I've written a lot of songs with Drop D, you know, especially the F major 7 randomly. A song I, I wrote in college called Come Into Me that's all about this F shape. It's like a six groove. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, one. Two. And just sliding shapes around for me as a songwriter was always really interesting because then you end up with some chord nobody's ever heard before you know that that to me was like the bomb with songwriting it's like i don't want to write some song that sounds like other people's songs i want to take some chord shape and move it into some new position so drop d for me opened up a lot of possibilities and i am way behind on keeping up with comments so let, let's see what other people have questions about but that that's sort of an overview of drop d that's a really good question actually um so oh my gosh um Oh gosh, uh, Renee speaks four languages. Oh my gosh, that is a world traveler right there. That is what being Europeans is all about. Like, man, I should have moved to freaking Europe, you know, and then I'd be speaking more languages. Um, are, am I going to do more 90s country song lists? Oh, now, now I, so, so Jack, that's a really good question. So I've been working on like the decade series with the songbooks. Um, what I'm mainly trying to do is trying to figure out um, like basically what, um, oh gosh, sorry, I was trying to make sure like the iPad was still going. Um, if I drop out because I, like my power dies, we'll just call it a day. I hate to do that, but that's just kind of <laughs> like where I'm at with technology right today. Um, but um, yeah, man, I'm definitely trying. I'm, what I was actually planning on doing, I have a lot of 90s country up. So, And what I did was I went and made a master list of all the song covers that I have, like all thousand freaking tunes that I have up as play-alongs, which those are fun, right? Because you can play along with them. The chords are going by, the, you know, the, the stuff's up there. That's how I learned was going to people's houses, going, hey, man, play da -da -da a song, and I'm going to read your hand and figure out how to play that song because, like, you know how to play that song, and I don't. So I, I feel like the cover lessons are the bomb. They're, they're what took off on my channel. That They're what's helping pay my bills a little bit. So it's I, what I, was, I did was I kind of put them all together. But I don't know if it's going to end up being like a 90s just country song list. I think some of the country songs that I have, depending on the decade, kind of fit more into like the decade series is what I'm thinking right now. And I'm open to suggestions on this because this is a new thing for me. But I'm trying to figure out like, I got a ton of songs from the 70s and some of them might be country songs. And then, you know, and some of them get on the line too. Like, where are you going to put Jimmy Buffett? Because Jimmy Buffett's kind of like, 
I mean, I love the man, but he's he's Americana, right? That's like kind of almost country. Like he did Five O'clock Somewhere with Alan Jackson. Like Zach Brown's kind of the same way. Like, is that really country? It's not really country, country. It's not Johnny Cash. You know what I mean? Like that, that gets really weird when you get like on the thing. I think uh, it's kind of cool to try and put it together too, like with those. And you'd have like a track list. You know what I mean? So it might be like, here's all the songs from 1970 to 1979 that Munson has up. Here's the track list, and they're all alphabetized. Some of them are country songs. Some of them are flute. You know, I, I, but I, I think if I've got, you know, like I just put up the Jimmy Buffett songbook, you know, that has like the seven songs that I have, and I, I, I have tutorials for all of those too. I guess I should be like, hey, you should go watch those videos, because they are like Jimmy Buffett was one of my like heart song songwriters from really early age, and so he's one of the first people I gravitated to to try and teach people guitar through YouTube. So for almost all those songs, there's only one I don't have a how to play tutorial on where I actually literally walk you through, the, these are the chords that we need, this is the strum pattern that you need, this is the chord pattern we need to play this song. So if you hit some, like, if you're like, oh yeah, I'll jump into that, and you're like, B minor, what? Um, and now easy B minor is this guy, right? So high E second, third fret, fourth fret. Just as an aside, that's a little teeny B minor. Strum to the E, B, G, no problem. You don't have to do a bar as a B minor chord, but but in that those how to play tutorials, I discuss other B minor options and which ones really kind of match the song better. So you may want to check that out because Cheeseburger in Paradise, you really want that bar B minor if you can do it, right? I'm in drop D, but I got my low D now. You know what I'm saying? Like so, <laughs> yeah. you know. Anyway. So if, if you want a diagram of that, this is like my picture of B minor, little B minor. Here's the Jimmy Buffett song list. But I, it's, I made a point where I, I just, I made this file called Whittling, where I made like the master list and then kind of tried to organize it by year. And then artists, if I see a bunch of songs I've done by different artists, I'm like, oh yeah, I could just make an Ed Sheeran playlist. But see, once I pull it out and I do like a song, but with one artist, I don't know if I need to to take those songs and recycle them into a decade thing. I don't I don't think I need to. But I, but yeah, the 90s country song list, yes. I'm just not sure if it's going to be all specifically country. But see, I, I feel like classic country has got to be a thing with all the Hank Williams and Patsy Cline and Willie Nelson and Dolly Parton and you know what I mean? Like, cla like you know, or classic country, you know, like country standards is what I, I, I'm kind of thinking. Like, it might be a con classic country songbook and have like a lot of stuff. But when you start getting into like modern stuff, like Luke Combs and uh, Eric Church, like a lot of that stuff to me sounds like poppy, uh, you know, I, I mean, not to put it down, it's, it, it sounds like Fleetwood Mac with a twang, you know what I mean? Like, just country, it's not as, you know. So I'm kind of more tempted to take those songs and throw them into a decade series, and I'm not sure if I have enough of them to support like a whole playlist. So anyway, I hope that kind of answers your question. I'm going to try and do it in a way that makes sense, where I'm not recycling a whole bunch of songs back in. Like, I mean, gosh, man, there's a whole bunch of Jimmy Buffett that could go into like a 70s or an 80s decade series, but if I've already made like, here are the songs I've already done, you know, I'm trying to like kind of use the ones I've already done, like rather than go like, I've got to shoot these hundred songs to get this playlist together too, so... Eh. Like, Remember When almost makes sense in a decade series and not necessarily like in a dedicated, you know, country. You know, I think you know what I'm saying. So anyway, I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to end up with, and I'm open to suggestions, obviously. Um, but anyway, cool, man. That, that's a really good suggestion. I, I really like the songbook thing because it is really weird. Like, because we had this thing in the last Q&A where I was like looking for things. I know what they are, and like YouTube is hidden them. I'm like, that's weird. And I think it's cool to like jump into a playlist while you're in the mood to practice with somebody and be like, hey man, here's an hour playlist or a half hour playlist or a three hour playlist of just stuff that's similar. And some of it might be over your head or you might hit like a weird strum pattern on something and be like, what did he do? And then go hit the how to play tutorial if I've got one for it or somebody else has one for it for that matter. Um, so anyway, uh, trying to catch up with, with comments because I, I started talking too much. That's how this Q&A stuff works. You just start talking too much. Uh, and you're talking to yourself, right? As I read comments from all the people watching. <laughs> Here we are. It's me again. <laughs> talking to me. Uh, let's see. Uh, but, uh, man, thanks so much, man. Thank, th oh, gosh, man. Thanks for all the love. And I really do appreciate you guys making time on your Labor Day weekend to come and hang out with me virtually here on the channel. So uh, do you think I'll be okay to put a set of acoustic 12s? Hmm. 
Mr. Cheswick has a question about um, set of 12s. Like, so when, when you talk about gauges, I don't know how many guitar players we're talking to. It might all be guitar players right now. But uh, the, you're talking about the E string. It's going to be a 12 on my Gretsch resonator guitar and then play it like I would acoustic. Um, so so my, my experience with Dobros and resonator guitars, like basically it's like a guitar with a spider in it or you've got like a basically like a Nashville that's like all freaking solid metal, you know, and that's more like a tone issue. I don't think there'd be any problem with putting 12s on it. Um, I am I am a fan of lighter strings myself, and it can depend on what tuning you're planning on doing with it. Like, if you were like, I'm just going to throw t a t set of 12s on my resonator, um, like a set of acoustics, like Martin, that sounds like Martin, uh, what, Martin Lights, randomly. Not the custom lights, but the lights would be a 12. A medium would be a 13-ish for an acoustic. So you would throw that on there and then just like put it at like guitar tuning. You should be good to go with that. It'll just give you a different tone. I, I think that, that'd be the way to go, man. Um, although really like 11s, I, I, I'm a big fan myself of, and they're not giving me a spot and they definitely don't pay my me anything actually, but uh, I love uh, Polyweb Custom Light Elixir Strings. That's what I normally use on my, my steel string stuff. Um, with the resonator, I'm not sure if nickel wound strings would be better. Like if you took a power slinky Ernie ball, I'm also an Ernie ball fan randomly. I normally like pink set of, of super slinkies randomly for my electrics in general. Occasionally, like this week, I took a, like an extra light gauge and stuck it on my students' guitars. If you haven't played on extra light strings, just do do yourself a favor and try it one day and if it gets really rattly you're like oh man but at least the bar chords are really easy and now i'm playing for two hours instead of one without my hands hurting do it silk and steel strings custom light gauges you know light, light gauges like my bass i actually scaled my bass down so instead of like playing on like normally a bass gauge e a d g would be 180 60 40 what i did was i took the 80 and stuck it on the e and then use the 60 for the A and use the 40 for the D and got a 30 for the G. And I love that. Like on my double neck, man, light strings are the bomb. Explore it. Because so much of your tone, especially if you're plugging in, it's coming from your amp and it's coming from your effect pedal. You don't need strings for tone anymore. Like that's a 60s myth. Unless you're doing surf and you just want to hurt yourself or like you want to bleed like Steve Ray Vaughan. That's, that's a different thing. Self-torture is cool. But I'm just not into that necessarily. I'd rather play for 12 hours. I actually, that's kind of my day job is playing for like 10 to 12 hours at a stretch sometimes. I started teaching on Friday, 8 a.m. in the morning. I ended, when we ended the jam, at 11.30 at night. I basically played straight on through. I don't even remember. I don't think I had a break to eat anything. It was just like straight on through, man. But music is like my life's blood. So man, I'm just thankful I get to do this for a living. But uh, drop D would be my fab on a 12 string. I think tw drop D on a, on a 12 string would be cool. If, if you're into like weird tunings too, I, I do like in my own songwriting and gosh, Joni Mitchell, if she was here, she'd be like, hold on, grab a pad. I'm going to give you all the weird tunings in the whole world. But I, I like drop double D or drop D, right? Get that low D randomly. I, from a songwriting point of view, sometimes I will take the high E and tune it down to a D also. This is what I call drop double D tuning. D, A, D, G, B, D. And then you get like your D all of a sudden becomes like this weird D sus and your D sus becomes like a D minor shape dig, dig that right and then and then like another one is the dad gad like if you if you're familiar with David Wilcox and if you're not familiar with David Wilcox you could you go check him out he's like a North Carolina sound, songwriter who does dad gad a good bit kind of sound um I, I wrote another song oh oh now open d i feel like i'm so close to open d right now and i do get comments like oh yes you should do this in open tuning and that, uh, if i'm going to do something in open tuning normally i will play a banjo and just be like i'm gonna open g because that's basically banjo tuning um, but but from where i am right now if i took the, the g string down to an f sharp that's like your open d major tuning which is basically like Sort of the Black Crows, She Talks to Angels tuning, but down a whole step so you don't break strings. Uh, that kind of thing. Um, 
using an E major shape for that little D. This would be what, like an E minor now, something? Yeah, eh, E minor with a D in the bass. Eh. Anyway, so I mean, th those are like my, some of my favorite tunings. I had a, 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 a song at one point where I was playing around with like an open uh, E major tuning thing, like on the high E and B. It's weird. All right, I'm back in standard now, right? Ish. <laughs> I'm standardish. I am in standardish. All right, but, but uh, it was is this weird tuning where you took the, the the standard and went like took the G up to G sharp, which you could break a string. Don't don't maybe don't do that. It works out better on, on nylon, I guess. Yeah, but anyway, the idea behind the song was like I could have an E major drone thing and then I could do uh, chord shapes like on the low string so this becomes a minor chord what am I doing Bleh. six on the D seven on the A nine on the Louis it's like a C sharp minor and then my B chord becomes like what four six seven anyway I don't, you, you end up with some weird places sometimes if you're writing songs but anyway this is a song called pains me to know it's kind of sad anyway but it's a C sharp minor with this drone E major but it's cool sometimes, like, just to grab a different tuning and just, like, go for it, you know, and just see, like, what shapes end up sounding like what. You'll take shapes that you know already, and they'll sound completely different because you altered the tuning of the guitar. But that is weird. Like, when I'm picking out a tune, a lot of times I'm going to hear that and go, oh, that's still just this chord if I'm writing out a chord chart for it. So that gets a little weird. But let me go back to standard and try and catch up with stuff. All right, 12 on a resonator, go for it, man. But you might want to try 11s even or 11 nickel wound. Uh... Cause I I don't know I don't know why I'm like nickel to with the you know ah, with the metal metal guitar metal resonator metal spider I, don't, I it just feels like maybe nickel wound strings might be better for that not as much I don't have as much experience either with resonator guitar so I don't know man I would try it the only way to find out is to try it and that's that's the answer to everything really uh, <laughs> don't do everything but but I, oh gosh what's that song Shakira wrote you know try everything yeah, that's a good song. Um, that's up as a cover listen. Uh, Chicago has a bad honk accent. Oh, yeah, it does. Chicago is all crazy. I'm sorry I have to go, but I will come back. Oh, please come back, calm. And then uh, uh, Renee says, it's so interesting how one has so much sound flexibility with guitar. Then I, oh, yeah, man, guitar is cool, man. It's, uh, one of my first teachers said, hey, man, yeah, guitar's got all 12 notes on it. And he was right. <laughs> it does. It has all 12 notes on it. Uh, okay, see you soon. All right, awesome. Plus two notes, right? Oh my gosh, Mark's here. Hey, Mark. Oh, dude. How is my Minnesota accent? You're just going to like laugh at that. You'll be like, it's not, that's not how we talk, you know. No, 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 I'm going to English, man. I don't know what, man. I'm just having a good time, man. Good morning. Happy Labor Day, dude. That's one of the hardest working people I know is Minnesota Mark, man. He helped put the stage together. We have the Minnesota Mark stage. We had a, we got open mic night this Saturday, too, or this Thursday. Thursday, 7 o'clock. Munson Music, Newberry, South Carolina. Come and play on the stage. We just had the jam on Friday. Just had game night yesterday. My friend Robbie drove down from Winston Salem, three hours away, to come and play with us. It was awesome. It was great. I hadn't seen him in a long time. I had to hug him like five times. It was great uh, for hours. And he's been like, "Oh man, dude, it's so good to see you." It was like that. Uh, but uh, Jack, yes, I'm looking for classic country. Yeah, man, excellent, dude. I want the classic country too. Like anytime I hear Hank Williams sing, like I feel like I'm listening to my granddaddy. Like, and there's a lot of really good uh, country. I've got, I've got a playlist, like, um, kind of working on that right this second. I can give you an idea of the kind of things that would be in a classic country playlist because I'm at the computer where I'm kind of whittling these songbooks together. So if you want a taste of what we'll end up with, and I'm not completely done with it yet, you know, like I said, some of these will just end up in, um, oh gosh, in the, in the decade series, which will be like just a catch-all because, you know, it's like songs of the 70s. That can be like any style, and then I don't have to figure out or decide whether something's really country or not country enough. Um, but I want to make sure like all the songs that are there, you know, that are cool that people have asked for, like end up there. So what I got so far as far as a country playlist would be, um, oh gosh, and some of these are, okay, oh wow. Some of this is like really catch-all, and I'm not sure if I want to throw these back in a, a late night, but uh, Oh, man, yeah, I got country, Americana, Southern rock. I got a bunch of stuff that could go in, in decade series stuff, but then the artist that might be represented would be like John Prine, Patsy Cline, Johnny Cash, Hank Williams, Towns Van Zandt, Willie Nelson, Merle Haggard tunes, Dolly Parton tunes, Zach Brown tunes, maybe. I, and I guess I was kind of debating whether to throw Jimmy and, and Jimmy Buffett into that, 
but then I've got like a whole bunch that I guess I could just throw into like you know like individual songs where like I've got a bunch of stuff like all the way through like 2023 with like last night not a fan of, of Morgan Wallen's I, you guys might be but I, I feel like modern I'm just not I don't know modern country to me just seems like they, they just want to make people mad or support alcoholism or domestic abuse or they're mad at the wrong people for the wrong reasons but uh anyway uh, or, or mad at the right no mad at the wrong people yeah yeah exactly what I just said uh, but anyway, I got some Miley Cyrus, some Kenny Chesney, uh, John Mellencamp. I was thinking Pink Houses kind of almost fit that bill. Janis Joplin, Mercedes Benz is definitely a country tune, right? Marty Robbins, Garth Brooks, uh, Dave Mason, Luke Combs, David Allen Co. tunes, uh, Wilco. I feel like California Stars and some other uh, Woody Guthrie tunes sort of fit in the country also. Uh, Chris Stapleton tunes. Olivia Newton John started out as a country artist. I already put together a Taylor Swift. Uh, uh, playlist although she started out country right so this gets really confusing when you're like a country playlist but then i was thinking about a lot of like southern rock because i feel like that's very country too like marshall tucker charlie daniels uh allman brothers you know, bob seeger feels country to me with turn the page jerry reed like a lot of these songs are just like really good songs so they just get covered by every genre you know people artists from every genre so it, it gets weird when you're starting to go like you know what I mean? I, I don't know. I'm just the older I get, the less I believe in genres, and I just believe in good songs. But anyway, it sounds like a good list. Like, classic country is definitely going to be... I mean, it's gonna, I don't know how many it is, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be there, man. It'll be there soon. Yeah, Just David said, yes. All right, cool. I, and I, I like the book Playlist, too, man. It's like, grab a couple beers and freaking jump in and play for a couple hours, you know? It's like, we don't have to, like, try and dance between a playlist or stick... You know, I, I know for years I've been like... If you find something you can really like and you really love, you know, make a playlist and stick it in it so you can find it. But I feel like that's more work for you guys. I feel like it's just more fun to go, well, I'll just go play a bunch of songs and see if, and if I don't like something, I'll just skip over it, you know, or I'll go make a sandwich while that one's playing and I'll come back and play the rest of them, you know. <laughs> it's all about, like, you know, trying to keep ourselves motivated to make ourselves better by playing more music because I, I feel like that keeps you young, man. The more music you play, the younger you get. <laughs> so, uh, right on. Yeah, oh, that's cool, Jack. Yeah, thanks for coming to the ch man. Coming to the show, man. That's awesome. Just David too. Uh, so, th yeah, thanks for the tips. No problem, man. I, I hope that helps, Cheswick, because um, I I feel like it, it really is about like experimenting. You know, like what string gauges might be good for a certain instrument. Certain in like this instrument, for example, is a is a classical esque, but it's also like a a, a smaller body. And so it's braced for this instrument to use nylon strings. But if you use heavier strings, what it does, it, it creates more vibrations from this area of the guitar. Like the lower part here is actually where the sound gets created. And if you have heavier strings, then they vibrate the wood more and you normally get a louder sound with more tone. Now if you're on an, on an electric, it doesn't matter. There is no resonating something on a Strat. Which is why I'm sort of confused normally where people are like, Oh yes, I paid $4,000 for this Les Paul. It has the most amazing sustain. I think that's crap. I, I think you could get just as much sustain from like a Dan Electro going through like some crazy effect rig. You know, or if you got the right amp, it doesn't matter. But like that's the idea behind like the tone thing, you know. So some people, but you don't know until you try it. And then if you find something you really like the sound of and it's super sweet, you just got to write it down and remember what it is. Because, like, every guitar is different, too. But, like, I wouldn't want to take steel strings and stick it on this guitar because the bracing is made to accentuate these strings, you know. So, I, I don't know. Like, the main, main thing is, like, experiment. And, and you'll go, oh, yeah, I put nylon strings on my steel string and it sounded awful. And you go, I'll never do that again. You know, or <laughs> I put, <laughs> I put uh, <laughs> What, oh gosh, I had a student who was all into round or flat wounds. I put flat wounds on my strat, and now my bridge does this. And like, maybe that was a bad idea. You can crank down the strings, but eh. But on an arch top, it fe they feel really good, you know. So like, that's why there's so many different types of strings. That's why there's so many different types of picks. You know, there's just a, that many type of people that you know in the world. But uh, see, can I do a play along for She Talks to Angels? I need to do that. With the riff too, I and I do like a normal. Now that's the one I have a how to play. If you're interested in, she talks to angels by the Black Crows. Love the Black Crows, and uh, oh man, I played Merle Fest. Actually, the brothers, the Robinson brothers, played Merle Fest this year. Me and my dad go to Merle Fest every year. If you want to meet up with me at Merle Fest, give me a message. But normally I'm under the tree on the Watson stage, and I just kind of like go back and forth. 
But you could come by and say, hey, Munson, how's it going? I, I saw you on live thing. Um, but anyway, but normally I would do it in standard. It's one of those weird things where like, they do it in an alternate tuning, but that doesn't mean you can't do it in standard. And actually, like, for a play-along on She Talks to Angels, there's the riff. Oh, gosh, that was awful. I need to go practice, right? And I do have, like, a how to play on this. I feel slightly redeemed, right? Right? So even though they do it in an open tuning, you don't have to do it in an open tuning to get that sound. And actually, if I'm doing a how to play on it, uh, there's only three chords in that song. It's E major, A major, and a B, and you can do a B7. So I'd be really tempted to just do the play along in E, and the ukulele players will be going, E? No! <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but anyway, you know, uh, I'd be really tempted to do it that way myself, you know, because that's how I'd play it out. If somebody came up to me at a bar gig and was like, hey, she talks to angels, I'm not going to retune into open E, because I could break a string if I go G to G sharp on stage. It's just a random thing. And they just want to sing along anyway. You know, if I was doing like a solo gig, you know, eh. you know, if I'm doing it in a full band or something, and they're like, yeah, we got to do it this way, sound like just like recording, that's a different thing. But for me, I'm like, oh yeah, man, uh, I'll just I'll just play it real quick because it's a three minute song, and then I'm on to something else, right? But uh, yeah, that I will definitely write that on the list. That's a really good suggestion. Where'd that come from? Moy Ferzi, Moy Ferzi. I, I don't know if I'm saying anybody's right name. Oh gosh, Munson is. How do I say Munson? Woo. All right, so she talks to angels. I will, I will put these on the list, and I'm sure it's on the list already. I do have a chart for it already on Pinterest. There are lots of free charts on Pinterest. Do you guys need a tutorial on how to put a gig book together from Pinterest? You probably have to have a PC if it was a tutorial from me, because I have no idea how Apple stuff works. Obviously, because I still can't get this iPad to go. Oh yes, you created a live link. I know what it is, and then start on time. Like, I don't know, am I supposed to, like, buzz in at 8.59, or, like, I don't know. You, you guys tell me, I'm using this, I don't know, I don't even know what software I'm using right now, but anyway, it's working! It's working! I'll be like Anakin Skywalker, it's working! <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, definitely, She Talks to Angels would be a great one. I love the little riff, too, and if you're interested, I guess I could, let me show you, hold on, because I, I, we were doing a lot of this last time, and I had a lot of um, oh gosh, there, there were all kinds of like, let me talk about and plan to what I'm going to do beforehand time last time. So thank you all if you were here for the last Q and A, cause I feel like I was like all crazy and was like, let me tell you everything in the whole universe before anybody asks a question. Uh, uh, yeah, th th this is definitely feels better today. Like I said, Oh, she talks to angels, bams. All right. So there's this thing It's called a chart. I stick them on Pinterest. All right. So I'm going to. She talks to angels. All right, this is my Pinterest chart for it. And I've got like the E, F sharp thing like up at the top. Eh, but see like that whole riff, I would probably just play E if you wanted the easy way to do, you know, so. Never mentions the word addiction. You know what I mean? Cause like the licks there. and then you come in with, you know what I mean? But it's all kind of like this cool E thingy. So on the chart, I really should just been E. So I'll probably end up re copying the chart too. But anyway, there's there's the chart link to Pinterest. And what you would normally go is go to Pinterest. I'm going to right click my mouse. I'm looking at my computer right now. I'm like, oh, I'm on Pinterest. I right click and it has this thing that says, when I right click the mouse, it's that thing that tries to run away. And you might have a wireless one. They, they're, those, I got an eight year old, like those disappear. Like that's why everything's plugged in in my room. Uh, but anyway, you right click and it says save image as. So I would save image as, and I could save it on my desktop. And once I've saved it as a picture, I like this program called, uh, what is it? Earfin View? Earfin View. It's just like a really quick free picture editor. If you're interested, I'll put a link here. Um, I use this program and have used this program for years and years and years. Uh, uh, I'll put like picture editor. You know, because then that way if you, you can bring it up and you can go, I want to print it full size or I'm gonna cut it down this way or I'm gonna crop out all the crap that Munson put over there you know what I mean and make the picture look like what you want it to make look like when you print it and then if you're really interested in how to play that song in standard tuning I think because like all my tutorials are in standard tuning if I go over here and I go Munson talks to angels I do like when I have a chance to uh, I, I'm talking to all of you angels right now actually so I go over here and I go bam bam ba, I go like 
how uh, she talks to talk she talks talks to angels how to play tutorial. So if you want to watch Digital Me teach you how to play that riff right now too, uh, Moy Ferzi. Fer, Moy Ferzi. Gosh, what a cool name. All right, so um, anyway, you could go watch Digital Me like teach you, and I may not be wearing glasses there. I might look more like this. Probably no beard too. Yeah, maybe about 10 years younger because I don't do how to plays anymore. I'm just going to do the play alongs because they're more fun, right? So uh, anyway, oh my gosh. So there's some links for you at the bottom of the page. Uh, and then I found over here, Kevin. Hey, Kevin, how's it going? Uh, talk, oh, yeah, cobalt strings. All right, so Kevin's recommending cobalt strings for the resonator, I think, right? I mean, that could be cool. I, I really, like I said, I'm a, I am I like Elixir, Custom Light, PolyWeb. Don't like the NanoWeb. Uh, they're like 11s to, they're not 48. They're like 11s to 52 or something. It's almost like a light top, heavy bottom kind of thing. But like the 11 to me, especially like if I'm going to do bends and or attempt bends on my acoustic, and I'm talking about my acoustic flat, my, my, my flat top box guitar is what I'm talking about. It's like not this one. This would normally like classical strings. I used to be a big fan of Diodario, like uh, medium tension or hard, hard tension, hard tension. for, for And these, these are probably Labella's 2001s, which are cool. Uh, Martin classicals. I, I don't know. Like I'm, I feel like nylon strings are cool. Like, yeah, but I'm, I'm not as, as, as worried about nylon strings normally but i don't know i mean there is a different tone there i'm sure you know like i said it's like different strokes for different folks man it's like whatever string you like but yeah cobalt strings i've never reused cobalt strings so i don't, I don't know anything about this um not that i'm aware of like the steel strings that i use the polyweb ones are the phosphor or i like phosphor bronze they last about three times as much as as bronze i used to have a, a customer who really liked the sound of dead strings and if you like dead strings get martin bronze and they'll die in about a day if you play enough and then you'll have that dead string tone you've been looking for, <laughs> which is cool. Like new strings sound alive and new and, you know, there's more overtones. The more you play them, the duller they get. So there are people who really like the dull sound of, of strings. You know, I like strings that aren't broken. <laughs> I'm not really picky. Um, but like I said, those are the ones that I like. Um, for, so I would go 2001 Labella for my classical. I like... Uh, Yep, Elixir, Polyweb, Custom Lights for my acoustic, and then, and that's the one that 90% of all y'all are watching the guitar strums, that, those are the strings that are on that guitar, but sometimes they will finally get to the point where it's like, well, I really need to change them now, they sound a little bit dead. Um, newer strings will resonate, different parts of the guitar to sound more alive. Um, for my arch top, randomly, I really do like, like, the Fender flat wounds, but like the lightest gauge you can freaking get, but they're still like 13s or something, you know, but and then for my electrics, I normally like Super Slinkies, which are the pink packs of the Ernie Balls. They're not paying me, and they're not sending me extra strings. Unless you work for Ernie Ball or Labella, or you can send me strings if you want to send me strings. I mean, that's a cool tip, too. But anyway, uh, cobalt strings sound like something to try and see if you like the sound of it. Could I do a play-along for Dust in a Baggie? I have a chart for that tune. I'm really trying to get to a point where, like, the songs that I cover on the site I feel good about. And so I, I've had that request for Dust in a Baggie before, and I'm just not a fan. <laughs> I like Billy Strings. He's a great player, don't get me wrong, just of that particular song, too. Because I do have kids that watch the channel, and I need to get away from that. I feel like, especially during the pandemic, we're all like, all freaking and, and, and you know, all crazy. And I got a little bit crazy with some of the things I was posting, I'm sure. But here's a chart for Dust in a Baggie. And then you can go play it with, with Billy Strings. But I, I don't know. I'll put it on the list. But uh, I have Dust and a Baggy. Yeah, but it's kind of like Sam Stone. Like, I just don't want to play that song. Good song. Don't mind going and listening to it. Don't mind necessarily going and playing along to it. But for me to sit down and spend, like, two or three hours of it, I just don't want to kill myself. You know what I'm saying? And, like, I've got friends who live through the whole Dust and a Baggy thing. So I just, I don't know, man. Like, some things you just can't do. And I, I just can't do it yet. Like that, and that, and that's just where I'm at. So, uh, but sorry, I'm late this morning. Lots going on. Oh, hey, Tammy. Oh my gosh, you're here. Um, <laughs> oh, Danielle. Oh my gosh, Danielle Moy. I remember it. Right, Moy Fursey. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, I remember. Yeah. I'm terrible. I can't learn from charts. I need playalongs, or my brain just can't do it. But well, there's lots of playalongs coming for sure. So, um, and that that she talks to angels. I'm all about that. And that's kind of a sad song too. That's kind of borderline too, right? Um, I really want. Um, I feel like over the years, anyway. I've kind of tried to gravitate to uplifting songs, songs that helped 
people or there's a personal connection to that I had necessarily. Um, that's what I'm normally attracted to necessarily. So I don't necessarily want to be like, I'm not going to do that song, you know, but I, I feel like th there's some songs that, you know, for me to do a, a, a cover lesson of it, like I have to know the song really well. I also end up spending a lot of time with the song, but I also want it to kind of represent like what I want to say. Like, actually, like I'm kind of on the fence about Last Night by Morgan Wallens right now. Like, I really feel like I ought to just pull that down. It's just not me. So I like Doc Watson too, man. And Tennessee Stud, I do have a chart for Tennessee Stud. I love Doc Watson, actually. Uh, Tennessee Stud, that's that's where it was. Yeah, absolutely. Hold on, because they um, that's a really good one, man. Like that, and see that that to me is like more classic, you know. And, ooh, this is the Doc Watson version. Ooh, I've got two charts for it. Looks like I've got a Tennessee Stud in D, and then I've got a version Capo Five in A. Let's go with the D one. There's a. Oh, yeah, there's some B-flats in this. I guess this is the recorded key, probably. I don't know. You know, it's one of those things where it depends on what key it is, and I'm, I do try and gravitate to, like, whatever the easiest thing is. But uh, Tennessee Stud. I'm, I'll, I'll go check that out for sure, man. And I'll think about Dustin in a bag. Yeah, I just need to go, like, hang out with Billy a little bit more or something, yeah. Um, I, I, don't know, I don't know why, man. I just feel like there's some things that uh, I, I just I want to post things that, that we can all play together and feel good about. You know what I mean? Like, we don't want to play Sam Stone. We'll all be like, oh, man, I'm so sad. You know what I mean? Like, and, and sad songs are cool, but you do, you know what I'm saying. I think y'all know what I'm saying. I, th I think you probably watched enough covers at this point to be like, yeah, that's cool. Um, so, t yeah, there's my chart for Tennessee Wa uh, Stud by Doc Watson. He's also got, like, some really cool and, oh, gosh, what's that other one? Um, This Train Was Bound for Glory. That's a good one, too, uh, randomly, just thinking of, like, other, like, folk stuff in general. Uh, this train, this train, and see that that goes into like some of the worship stuff, which would be really cool at that point too. Um, what other Doc Watson tunes do I have running around here? That might be what I got today. And Doc Watson things, um, and there's other Billy String songs up there too. Oh, Lone Pilgrim, that's a good one. I used to play that with my friend Gary, and then uh, Columbus Stockade Blues is up here. Um, so yeah, you might want to cruise to the Pinterest too. You can make a, a quite a gig book. You know, in some cases, I got the real key, and then, but normally, I, I, you know, if there's a, a way to make it easy on the capo, I will do that in a heartbeat. I'm all about it. Woo! Oh, my gosh. It'd be all crazy and stuff. So, uh, um, anybody else have any crazy questions? Because I, I feel like my, my, my power is going low on my iPad still. I was thinking about playing a tune uh, for Labor Day. I know Tammy just got here, but, yeah, if you got another question, jump on in. Uh... Because it looks like I'm kind of up at the thing. Oh, the, the the burn down. Oh, wait. Well, somebody just asked something. I like, oh, Tennessee Stud. And then, uh, oh, gosh, Danielle is saying, what about burn one down? Okay, let me put that one down, too. Burn one down. I don't see a chart for that yet, but burn one down. And I do have, like, quite a, quite a list of, of, like, you know, paperwork to go through. So there's always new stuff going up on Pinterest that I haven't had time to shoot yet. I know in some cases, like, I'll hit it and, like, be like, oh, hey, here's me jamming with the, the original, you know, to, like, I'll vet the charts that way. Um, like, the guitar cover lessons that go to Munson guitar songs are like that, some of them. Because it'll just be like, here's the link to the chart, da -da -da, this is what I'm following along. Um, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, there's, there's more stuff up that way, and I need to go through some of the paperwork and try and do some more of those lessons. I keep on thinking, like, oh, that'd be a great thing to do. And then, like, it's just about finding time. I'm sure y'all can relate to that. Hmm. But um, I was thinking about playing a tune, um, bef like before the end, and I was thinking about one. Oh yeah, this one. This is a fa uh, tune I, that I, I wrote with my sister too. Um, and then we might, yeah, yeah, throw another question up. If anybody else has any other questions, throw something up there. I'm, I'm gonna play a tune real quick while uh, while we're kind of waiting. This is called "Driving and Crying," and I wrote this with Jay Spell and, and my sister too. And I'm probably gonna mess this up, but I'll give it a shot. Yeah. 
with you. There's a song called Driving and Crying that I wrote with my sister and a, a couple friends. Oh, thanks so much. I appreciate it, Daniel. Uh, Tennessee from Pearl Harbor. Oh, right on. From Oh, wait. Or is that different people? Oh, oh, let me write that down, Tammy. Hold on. So Tennessee. Tennessee from Pearl Harbor. I gotcha. Okay, Pearl Harbor. Like the Hans Zimmer. Okay, gotcha. All right, cool. My Heart Will Go On for some reason also comes to mind. Is that... Is that also Hans Zimmer? I don't think it is. But anyway, let's see. Because <laughs> I know I have a chart for that one, and it's a pain in the butt. It's great. <laughs> it's one of those mmm songs, you know what I mean? Like, it's, whoa. But uh, that's a good question. Do I have anything by Hans Zimmer, like, up here on my Pinterest? I'm just curious. Oh, yeah, definitely not if I, I misspelled his name. Um, ooh, and nothing that way either. Okay, cool. My heart will go on. I know I have that. We'll go on, but who is that? That's just from Titanic, right? You remember that song, right? I guess I gotta just put Titanic. I'm trying to remember who who scores that. Uh, I just way off base. Who scores Titanic? Who scores? Come on, man. Who scores Titanic? Uh, James Horner. Sorry, my bad. He also does like some of the Star Trek movies. I love James Horner too. But anyway, ah, I don't know how I got them confused. But anyway. Uh, yeah, 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 that's a good song. I, I, I will definitely check that out. All right, you go this way. <gasps> there it is. <gasps> My heart will go on. There's a capo one. Mmm, there's like this cool thing going on with it. Oh, gosh, I have a Spanish chart for it. I do have some Spanish charts for things. Uh, all right, cool. Oh, my gosh. Uh, there's some wild stuff over this way and some wild stuff over that way. Mm, oh, there, that's the real key. Okay, cool. No, that's not the real key. Yeah. Ah, I know it's out there somewhere. I've got it in my folder. Anyway, sorry. Woo. But hey, y'all, ha happy Labor Day. I guess I ought to play like one more thing. Well, any other questions jumping in randomly? And thank y'all all for joining me on a random holiday. We'll do this again first Sunday uh, for October. Unless, you know, weird. Uh, good Lord willing and the creek don't rise. We'll be back here next month to do this again. And randomly, we do open jams at the shop if you're a local ish kind of person. Uh, we do that first Fridays of the month at 7 p.m. We do open mic night first Thursdays of the month at 7 p.m. We do a game night uh, on first Saturdays of the month where we play this crazy role-playing games and stuff. And uh, we got video games and all kinds of board games and stuff. Anyway, we do uh, hang out, hang out with us kind of day. And then uh, we also do this Q&A thing that's now first Sundays of the month. So that was my weekend was like open jam Friday, game night yesterday, Q&A today. So cool, um, but oh gosh, what we got? Oh, randomly with, with uh, that song I just played. This is a random thing. Um, I'm playing around with thirds off the B and the G string. A lot of D in the open A. Like ideas, like on the beginning. That kind of thing, and then moving around to the A string, and then kind of doing my thirds off the G and the D. Randomly, those other chords. I for, I always think this is the coolest thing. I got into piano voicings for a while. So I'm doing a B minor chord in that tune, like doing this crazy piano voicing, like root three, five. What the heck is that, seven? And then that's an F sharp. That's like the fifth again. But there's a C sharp. There's like a nine. It's like a B minor nine or something. Oh. And then the A, I was trying to do like root three, five, seven. The B's a nine. The E's a five. 
Yeah, man, just cool jazzy chords. Anyway, uh, never mind. All right, so I just love this chords. Um, ooh, and if you're interested in, in those, I guess I could tab them. One, two, three, four, five, six. And there's like an E chord like at the end of all that. But uh, it's a pain in the butt to stretch. Actually, I wrote the tune so that I would have to stretch <laughs> like crazy. Three, four, uh, two, two, two. This is like my B minor six or some B minor nine. I don't know. Anyway, and then there's like this A major seven. And I'm going five, four. Uh, yeah, five, four, two, one open open and then the E chord like is going open E and then I've got what seven six it's like a straight up E but like it's in a really cool voicing there too kind of tried to keep the piano voicings going and then this was what five four all right cool I'll just hold this up on the screen those are the tabs for the chords I was using in the song when I got to the bridge part so I thought that was cool I, I think I hear someone behind me doing laundry it's, me. I'm it's the laundry room we're in the laundry room oh sorry Oh, hey! Oh my gosh, this is my wife. She's about to pop her head on the thing yeah, and say, hey. I'm not. I'm okay. Not She's not. She's going to say, hey. And then, oh, I love you. I love you. That's the beautiful exotic creature that lives in my house. <laughs> her name is Kira. All right, so this goes this way. Bam, bam, ba -dang. And then, uh, but yeah, any other questions here? So yeah. Oh, about the song? Oh, I'd buy it. Oh, yeah. Well, man, I, I, oh, man, that would be great if, if people would buy my stuff. I, I, people, people don't watch my stuff. Oh, man, aren't we so, oh, we, we, we try, Daniel. We try to be cute. We, 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 I mean, um, but yeah, absolutely, man. I appreciate it. Thank y'all so much. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, there's other original stuff up on the channel, too. I need to, to re-record some of it. And I'm, I'm just putting my loop right together. I Normally, I'm, I'm more used to playing that particular song, the Driving and Crying one, on my loop rig, which is like my double neck and then uh, the keyboard. Probably nothing that anybody watches. I feel like when I play out with that stuff, it's like so much fun for me. And normally the audience is like, what on earth is he doing? But I, I've just got to get back into doing that kind of thing. Ooh, shout out from the Philippines. Hey, Woozy. Hey, Tammy. Hey, Danielle. Hey, Jack. Uh, oh, man, thank you all so much for joining me this morning. Uh, so my, my normal send off from the open, open jam would be uh, the shortest Beatles song of all time. So I'm going to say happy Labor Day to all of y'all. And then I will see y'all back here next month. If you have other questions, leave comments on the videos i read all the new comments i say new because youtube may hide if if you respond to a comment that i responded to but if you leave a new comment on a video i read them all every day and i respond to them all so if you have a question let me know uh a spanish guitar part for oh i will write that down all right ron says uh la isla bonita is that the beautiful island that's a beautiful name for a song by Madonna. I did have some weird copyright issues with Madonna at some point. Like I did a how to play on Express Yourself, but then they were like, no, you can't do that. So I was like, oh, what do you mean you can't do that? Uh, and so I was, so then they muted it. And so then I was like, no, really, this is just chords and strum patterns. You can't own chords and strum patterns. Like I never sang the song randomly, Ron. And then the next thing I knew, they had muted the video and they were like, oh, then, then they released it from the copyrights, you know, thing. And but then they, they lost the audio. So there's a there's a <laughs> so there's this video of me for Express Yourself by Madonna, but it's muted and there's nothing I can do about it. And I'm 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 I don't want to re-upload it because then there might be like a copyright issue and I might get a strike or something like the Don Henley thing. But anyway, I will put that on my list and see like where it is. Either way, I may be able to send you a link or something to a chart or I, I will try and throw it up on the Pinterest as a chart because there's a lot of charts there. May not do a cover lesson for everything. There's only so much time today. But I'm all about freaking charts, dude. All right, all good is good. All right, cool. But yeah, Decade Series songbook coming. Jimmy Buffett went up today. If you want to go jam on seven tunes of Jimmy Buffett, I uh, got Ed Sheeran songbook, Taylor Swift songbook, uh, the hymn songbook. It's got like 55, you know, three hours of hymns. Go, go play that. Man, you guys rock. All right, cool. Uptown Girl by Billy Joel. I'm going to put that on the list also. I may have, uh, I have charts for some of that. I mean, I do have, like, other Billy... Like, she didn't start the fire, or we didn't start the fire. I know I know there's other Billy Joel things on the Pinterest. Go check that out for sure, Woozy. But I will put that on the cover list also. Bam, 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 bam. And Decade Series is, will, will be coming. I'm going to try and get all these things together so we can do it. Classic country, definitely in the works. So, I love all y'all. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to play the shortest Beatles song of all time. It's called Her Majesty. Her Majesty's a pretty nice girl, but she hasn't got a lot to say. Her Majesty's a pretty nice girl, but she changed from day to day. I gotta tell her that I love her a lot, but I gotta get a belly full of wine. 
Her Majesty's a pretty nice girl. Someday I'm gonna make her mine. Oh yeah, someday I'm gonna make her mine. Yeah! Hey, happy Labor Day, y'all. Thanks for joining me for the live Q&A. We'll do this again. I love y'all. I love y'all. Take care. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs>